uh, we've been saying Venus and Aquarius, that's a positive for crypto and basically bullish until proven otherwise, in my opinion. So I've been definitely leaning uh, bullish uh, with that placement. Of course, it is co-present with Mars right now. There's been a, a Mars-Venus um, conjunction that took place last week. And, you know, I actually thought maybe that might slow down the markets a little bit. Uh, but, it, you know, it did for, I think, a day or two. People were a little nervous about that NVIDIA earnings call. But, uh, you know, NVIDIA posted a blockbuster earnings and stocks finished green again, you know, something like 15 out of 17 weeks or 16 out of 18 weeks uh, in a row. So, um, no, you know, right now this rally seems pretty unstoppable. Um, I do think there's some things in, in in March, uh, you know, that maybe are, are, are concerning. So um, we're still waiting for uh, S.J. Anderson here. Let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. Every time I click, not able to join, trying to join. Uh, hang on a second here. Just um, working with SJ to try to get him on the call. Uh, just give us a second here. Um, and um, we do have some eclipses coming up. Uh, so that's something we're going to be talking about. We are sort of heading into the eclipse uh, season. Um, so we obviously will have some, some things to say about that. Eclipses are always... Okay, uh, SJ is having some technical problems. I didn't, Marcelo, you know, didn't I predict this? <laughs> you did, I predict, actually. <laughs> didn't I say we were going to have a technical problem because Mercury is maximum combust right now? I was trying to get this scheduled for tomorrow where Mercury was actually Kazemi, but we couldn't schedule it. Um, so I was like, man, I think the whole thing is going to crash because Mercury is in detriment and maximum combustion. Um, so, uh, okay, we're, we're waiting for, we're waiting for SJ here, and, um, He's on, he's on now. Oh, okay, there we go, all right, cool. So, yes, SJ, yeah. all you have to do is unmute your, oh, wait a minute, yeah, um, hang on, I'm going to you as a co-host, too, I don't know if that makes any difference, but... Okay, should I accept the invite, or does it just yeah, automatically yeah. make me? Yeah. Okay, accept the invite, okay. Boy, these spaces are a bit clunky, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're a little bit. <laughs> okay, but we got a good crowd who's showing up today on this Monday morning, um, and a fresh look at the markets for the week. Uh, um, I don't know, uh, Marcelia, you want to go first, man? Um, e sure, sure, if you want me to. Um. Okay. Go for it. Go um, for it for like about 10 minutes, you know, 5, 10 minutes. Uh, we'll each get 5, 10 minutes to make a little presentation here on what are yeah. the things that you're looking at? What are the things that you think are interesting, you know, this week, uh, this month, uh, big picture, whatever, whatever you want sure. to whatever you want to say. Sure. Okay, thanks. So in the last space, I, the, the basic view was um, AI melt up and crypto should participate. That was my view from December, and that's really played out. I mean, NVIDIA, obviously, semiconductors, leading sector, other AI stocks doing really well, and cryptos are it did get in gear a little bit later, at least, um, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum. So um, my view from here, I think everything depends on your role in the market, whether you're a trader or an investor. As an investor, I think there's a lot more to go, especially for cryptos. I mean, I'm not, I can't imagine cryptos not being higher than they are now later this uh, is in the second half. Uh, excuse me, uh, second quarter. Uh, let's not get to the second half quite yet, but the <laughs> second quarter, we just got massive events, the Jupiter Canoe Uranus, which is in April, and then the Gemini Stellium also looks really good to me in June. Um, because Gemini has really juiced cryptos uh, in the past. 
and rallies have broadened out and maybe some things that aren't participating. I really like the way um, uh, May, late May and June look. So if you're an investor, I think it's just enjoy the ride and not to get too worried about, you know, the, the one day bear wonders. If you're a trader, you know, then you want to do more in and out and add leverage or take off leverage, then you're going to care more about the, the, you know, the relatively smaller swings. And I agree with you that maybe um, periods in March, you know, this kind of rally, the non, not, I mean, stocks are just, it's just non, has been nonstop. And um, uh, this is historically pretty rare. But the more the market gets bullish via sentiment, the more we'll have these more scary swings, I think. Um, so I agree with you that periods in March could give pullback opportunities and cryptos included. I think we're probably on the same page in terms of reasons like Mercury conjunct Neptune is probably going to be down. But how, you know, how many days down in front of that or uh, it's hard to say right now um, because my big picture is pretty massively bullish. Um, it's just that after things are this stretched, probably we're going to see some sideways action. But in my mind right now is uh, pretty healthy with um, market broadening out a little bit today. And it's curious that this is happening without like Apple. There's some names that aren't and Tesla. So some names aren't participating at all. Um, but Overall, markets are just usually bullish. That's about it. Okay. Any specific uh, aspects or planetary placements that you're looking at uh, right now? Well, the eclipse and the transits to nodes are always um, a little tricky, in my opinion, and they, they often throw curveballs. But I think um, I'm not so worried about the eclipse season. I think that Mercury... Um, conjunct the north node in Aries will be bullish cryptos and so that's some that's kind of my uh, take as of now and that'll influence you know later uh, like the second half of March and um, and then then into the full-on eclipse season I kind of would like to see a lunar eclipse high and then maybe a solar eclipse low because when markets are in bullish and kind of popular trades are doing well often the lunar eclipses turn out to be highs and then you know maybe mercury retrograde gives some chop or or we're not mercury retrograde can be bullish in bull markets and uh it's possible that um you know th that we just don't see uh a huge pullback during that but still um i'm i'm expecting you know pullback near Mercury conjunct Neptune, which is not that far away, but then overall the Mercury and Aries moving towards the North Node, I think that's going to be bullish cryptos. Okay, thanks for your uh, thanks for your thoughts there, Marcilio. Uh, SJ, uh, you want to step in? Sure. How's it going? How's it and going? By the way, I'm just going to say uh, we are going to take some questions at the end of this. I think we're each going to go about ten. 10 minutes, and then we will take questions for 10, 15 minutes. So I think uh, we're looking at about 45 minutes, maybe one hour uh, maximum uh, overall. All right, can you hear me? How's this mic? It's a, it's a yep. uh, okay, yep. Sony, um, you know, one of those cheap mics plugged into the cell phone. I was a little disappointed that you can't join spaces on the web. I thought I've done that before in the past. So anyhow, um, when's Elon going to get his shit together? Um, so... <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Hey, glad you're here. Glad to be here with you. Glad to be talking about this stuff. I mean, I don't really, I mean, there's always a lot to say. I just think the, the biggest thing that I would say is, I mean, this is a runaway raging bull market, and that's really all that matters. I mean, at some Which, by the way, we all predicted in the last two spaces. Just want to give us a shout out. <laughs> We were mega bullish the previous two times we did this, right? So we've been accurate. It's just important to acknowledge that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fitting with the larger theme of the Aquarian updates that we're in, the Aquarian age, you know, the age of the digital, the digital world, all of that stuff, having Pluto in Aquarius. What was that, January 20-something? It came into Aquarius. 
And so we're primed, I think, like just from purely technical speak, technical setting aside the astrology. I mean, there's really no, like, uh, um, nothing other than to say like straight up. I mean, I think, and I guess my view just on the technicals first, before I get into astrology, you know, where would these pullback levels be? And I don't think we can assume they're going to be deep. Um, I mean, you can go back to something like 2020, let's see, was it 2016? And that was the Venus cycle that matches the year we're in now. It's the four year having cycle year match. And when the market really got going, um, the pullbacks were, were just quite shallow. I mean, you, you can pull up something like the Ichimoku cloud, which is a, um, a technical indicator I really like, and the conversion line, which is the slowest or the one that's the most sensitive. You know, you get pullbacks to that conversion line or the, the other line, uh, let's see, what's that called? The baseline. Those two, pull, you know, those are levels where you might see I guess something that says requested here. I'm not sure what that is in spaces, but, um, you know, so I think that's the question is like shallow pullbacks, but basically it's kind of straight up. When would that end? When would straight up end? I really don't know. And I think that we could be seeing, um, it just not ending, right? Breaking through and going up to like a hundred K. I mean, that's the kind of euphoria that we're in, um, over the next, you know, period. I mean, I'm not, who knows what's going to happen? Not financial advice, who knows, but, it's just so bullish that the way, if, if you guys recall back in 2021, um, when the market really started running, those, uh, it didn't really stop. I mean, it was very, very shallow retraces to that conversion line on the one week Ichimoku cloud. And that's basically the, 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 the extent of every retrace. And so like, for example, where are we at now with that on the one week chart? Um, that line is around uh, 46, but as soon as next week, next week starts, it's going to come up to like 48, 50. I mean, we might not even see those levels again. Um, now, the astrology of it, and I tweeted this out. Go check my tweet just to give everybody the charts of kind of what I'm looking at astrologically is um, the three things. Let me start uh, farthest and then go into more local. But Jupiter and Gemini super bull cycle is still in play. That's the number four in that tweet. And I think that's my last tweet. And basically, Jupiter and Gemini is the most bullish Jupiter sign for Bitcoin. Now, it was 12 years ago, but still, that's the data that we have. Uh, it's an air sign, which we know Bitcoin loves. Jupiter is the planet of expansion. I think when that arrives on 25 May, we may see some you know, real surges here into May and June. Uh, that would be following any kind of post-having pullback. You know, it's like, and so if you look at the previous halvings, there's like these little pullbacks right after the halving. And then it just goes higher. And I think we may be, you know, looking out for like a May surge post having some point in May. So just keep that in mind. Um, the, the more uh, local, um, the next local is the Mars cycle. The problem with the upcoming uh, Mars cycle is it's starting on 23 March. That's two days before eclipse season. So remember, eclipses can sometimes be wonky. Um, Mars enters Pisces, which is the weakest sign by far from the Mars data the last three years and the last eight years. So maybe that Mars sign somehow does some something to Bitcoin. Mars will be in Pisces through the halving and through the eclipses. And so there you go. I think JP Morgan came out today and said, having priced in, I, I don't buy that. But what if there is some kind of Mars thing that happens here in March and there's some kind of blocks or some dampening and we have to wait till May for the next real surge? You know, um, that's, that's something to consider. More local, even more local than that. I've got this chart which aggregates the planetary data of Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars sign and Mer Moon and Mercury phase. And what that chart shows is just every day, there's a number that's generated as the percent daily open change. And that shows in, uh, after the next uh, new moon, uh, that new moon in Pisces in, in early March, there's some dips down. You know, and that's right around the time Venus leaves Aquarius, which is the strongest sign for Venus or one of the strongest signs for Venus and Bitcoin. So maybe there's, there's some March kind of lagging here, but I don't expect it to be uh, some kind of massive pullback again. We're in a major bullish cycle. That uh, a lot of other technical indicators are like just go 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 go. I think dips will be shallow and basically, I mean, I'm not trying to even give anybody advice on what to buy or sell or how to invest in Bitcoin or anything like that. My sense is it's just cold storage. It puts put a little bit in and you'll do fine. 
and you know trying to catch swings i'm going to leave all that to damas and uh, Mar uh for, for, um, Mar marcilio um this isn't really any tra really even trading advice at all it's simply data for me uh, okay then the last thing i wanted to share was the mercury cycle at when mercury conjoins the sun on the 28th it's a rare triple consume it's the sun and saturn and mercury but this is just kind of 101 BTC data, uh, starting with the superior conjunction, BTC is weaker. And that's across the data from last year, three years, eight years, and all data. It's one of the like biggest advantages. And so maybe something here, you know, at the end of this week, you get that Kazemi and then, and then BTC maybe cools off a little bit, maybe. Again, I don't think you can assume there's gonna be some kind of major reversals or shallow dips. The final one thing I wanted to say, this relates to the astrology of 2024 is Jupiter and Gemini were in the Carter years, Mars retrograde and Leo and then direct station and cancer were in the Carter years. And that was the second wave of inflation in the 1970s. And I just saw a story, Cleveland fed. They're one of the most reliable fed whispering uh, data people that they always, they come out and say, let me see here, Cleveland inflation. They're predicting a rise in inflation. So uh, it says Cleveland Fed's inflation now casting is projecting that February's headline and core PCED inflation rates. Both will be 3% year over year. This could spark another rally. Now, I don't know, 3% um, year over year. Now, maybe that's not a big surge, but still, I still think the inflation story is in play and I look for Jupiter and Gemini to kick that up. And I mean, these surging uh, asset prices are inflationary in my view, ultimately. So here was a, a market edge, macro edge, at macro edge, res, the Cleveland Fed inflation, like I see inflation is back over 5% on an annualized basis in February. And so, you know, is Bitcoin a safe haven? And this is their satire of this tweet. Thank goodness we are running the largest deficits ever with U3 at 3.7%. That'll help. There's this idea of like the U.S. dollar uh, and the you know somehow being under pressure with inflation and the deficit and Bitcoin could be a real flight to safety. This is the last thing I'll say. You know, there's this always this thing in Bitcoin circles. You wake up and it's like quadruple the price overnight because of some kind of crisis. And you know, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I think you probably want to hedge with some of some of your savings in a hard wallet in case something like that does happen. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to give it back over to you, Damas. That's my read, and good luck to everybody. And, um, you know, thanks for having me, Damas. Sure. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, that was some great info. Uh, SJ, with the kind of bigger picture guy uh, with the macro, and he's done a lot of great research on um, planetary placements and signs for Bitcoin, especially something that I'm a little bit weaker on. I'm more focused on the aspects and transits. So I always appreciate looking at his work. And, um, you know, he was the one that showed really that how good Venus in Aquarius is uh, for Bitcoin historically. So that's been really helpful. Uh, so I got a lot to say, guys. I got a lot of things I'm looking at here. Um, so, yeah, Venus is in Aquarius until March 11th. And I think this is the key date here. I basically agree uh, with what these guys have said, although I might be leaning a bit more bearish than they are. Uh, in March. Um, and that's not to say I think the bull market, you know, I, I, it's like we're talking about a bull market correction. Of course, we're always looking to see, uh, you know, when we might <laughs> get a buying opportunity because this is a, a raging bull market. And um, I don't see anything really stopping that maybe until the summer. Um, I know seasonally, obviously, stocks and cryptos have peaked in the last two summers. Um, and I think that that could happen again. Um, because of the Jupiter Saturn square that's going to take effect in August. So that's just a little bit farther out. But right now, um, it's interesting because I am seeing a confluence right around March 10th and 11th. We've got the March 10th, uh, actually, March, go to March 9th, and we've got a kind of tough looking Mars square to Uranus that could be a trigger for some short term volatility. March 10th, we've got the new moon at 20 degrees Pisces. This is key because it's in the, if you're using the Bitcoin inception chart, it's conjunct the Bitcoin natal Uranus and opposing the Bitcoin natal Saturn by about one degree. So that also signals to me that we're going to see some more volatility in March. And in fact, that signature, that is a signal for a pullback. 
Okay. Um, and then we're going into the March 25th lunar eclipse, which is at 5 Libra. And that one is square the Bitcoin NATO Mars by degree. So that one's also um, could be a signal for a pullback. However, there are also some favorables just to make it a little more complex. Uh, Jupiter will try in the Bitcoin natal sun um, in the, about, I think it's March 12th. Okay, so that could also hold up there. So this is the key period between March 9th, 10th, and 12th. Uh, so that's when I think maybe we reach a local top out period. And then I would be more concerned for a larger pullback. Uh, I think... Marsilio had mentioned the Mercury is going to conjunct Neptune, um, and that's actually, I think that's on March 8th. And then he didn't mention the next day has that Mars square to Uranus. So those two in a row look pretty problematic. So, um, you know, making the exact prediction, we'll, we'll have to see as we get a little bit closer. But another thing is that we could have a new moon uh, top out period there around that March 10th. Um, now, like I said, Jupiter's trying the Bitcoin sun on March 12th, so that will add some support. And then also uh, Saturn is going to be sextiling the Bitcoin sun uh, in the last week of March, right around the same time as that eclipse. So also offering some stability and support. So what does this all say? I think, you know, we do, we should look for some kind of a correction or a pullback, but I don't think it's going to be very deep, which is exactly what SJ was saying. I don't think it's going to be very deep because you do have Jupiter and Saturn playing a sort of favorable, supportive, bullish role. So it's mixed. And in a bear market, some, excuse me, in a bull market, sometimes the unfavorables uh, only end up being a kind of a flat, right? And the rally just uh, consolidates sideways. Uh, we're breaking out. We have a, you know, we have a big breakout today on Bitcoin above the key fifty-two thousand level. So this could. There's not a lot of technical resistance now, up until the old all-time high, which is sixty-eight thousand or sixty-five on the weekly. So we could fly. We could fly up to sixty to five between now and March tenth. Um, so again, March, you know, March 10th has this very tricky new moon top potential, followed by Venus leaving Aquarius on March 11th. I love it when we see those things kind of line up because then we can, then we can create a narrative. Then we, then we have a little, a story that we can start to put together, right? Venus will go into Pisces on the 11th. And it will be exalted. But what we've seen time and time again is benefits leaving Aquarius kind of leave crypto a little bit, uh, you know, kind of are a little bit bearish for crypto. So, you know, basically, if we are going to see a pullback, I would look between March 10th and 25th. Now, I don't think it's going to be that deep, and, and maybe it doesn't even happen at all. You know, maybe it's just a sideways consolidation, so I don't want... I don't want you guys coming back at me. Oh, you said we were going to get this big pullback. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm. I'm just saying there's definitely some potential for that to happen. Um, some other things I'm looking at also are the Fed meeting on March 20th. Okay, this is the key date you guys want to have on your um, on your uh, you know calendars, right? Because this is going to be, I think, a very key. This is going to be a very key Federal Reserve meeting um, and to see what Powell says. Now, by the way, Mercury, I believe, is conjunct Chiron that day. So I think there's a very high potential for a misstep or a miscommunication. As everybody who follows the Fed knows, uh, the press and everyone dissects Powell's every word that he says. And he's made many comments that were misunderstood and those have huge consequences for markets. Mercury conjunct Chiron that day. Uh, it should be an interesting one to watch. I think it's going to be very, very key. And it's five days before the March 25th eclipse, okay? Which, again, is square the Bitcoin NATO Mars. It's not favorably placed for Bitcoin. <coughs> so that Fed meeting, I'm wondering if maybe, uh, you know... Uh, maybe me messes up the markets a little bit going into the April eclipses, going into the Mercury retrograde, 
uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be due for some kind of pullback. Uh, things are going parabolic here and, you know, everybody's getting a bit euphoric and nobody's bearish. And that's really when you need to worry about a little bit about, about things. Um, however, as I believe Marsilio said, yeah, is, are we really going to see any kind of major crashes like before the Bitcoin having, um, I mean, probably not, right? I mean, uh, and the Bitcoin having, obviously, that's when most of the bullish parabolic uh, price action for Bitcoin has taken place historically. Then that happens on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction almost to the day of the Bitcoin supply reduction. So very bullish for Bitcoin tech. Also, um, before we take some questions, I just want to note you know, even if, okay, maybe there's some short-term factors like the new moon on the 10th or the 25th, the lunar eclipse, we've got some macro bullish factors. Uh, number one, which I want to point out is the dragon year, okay, which I've talked about a lot on my Patreon and a little bit on Twitter. Uh, the dragon year is, uh, generally speaking, it's a risk on year. I've looked at the last six dragon years for the S&P 500, and four of them have double-digit gains. Uh, one of them was flat with a 1% loss, and the only one that had a loss was the 2000 dragon year, and that was the dot-com bubble. So dragon years tend to be quite good for the markets, and Bitcoin is a rat, which does exceptionally well in dragon years. So I'm putting this as a favorable, would I bet my life savings on that? Probably not, but it's another signal of a macro bullish environment, uh, especially for Bitcoin. Also, um, something I've also noted in some of my reports is the Bitcoin progress sun is going to conjunct the Bitcoin natal Jupiter, which actually starts in a few weeks in March, and it goes exact in October. So that's a key uh, date, uh, early October Bitcoin progress sun, which is like the evolution of the identity of whatever you're looking at, um, is going to conjunct its natal Jupiter, which is a point of luck, optimism, expansion, abundance, and prosperity. And that's going to be in effect for an entire 12-month period and especially going to hit technically exact in October. So that's a date that we think is very key. Um, and then, of course, you've got this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And also you've got Pluto and Aquarius, which I think is really a macro bullish um, you know, uh, event really, uh, for AI, which I've been saying, uh, you know, since last year and for crypto, I also think for quantum computers, which are just the, uh, they've been a little flat this year, but they're just starting to move. So don't sleep on the quantum sector. Uh, but basically what we've seen is AI robotics and crypto, uh, self-driving cars, like also Marsilio mentioned, uh, I thought would be better for Tesla. It hasn't been great. You know, Tesla's been a real dog this year. Uh, not much. The Cybertruck, eh, you know, I don't know if it was a flop, but super expensive to manufacture and very slow process. So um, that's been really tough for, for Tesla. EVs certainly are the future. And I think Pluto and Aquarius is going to make uh, fossil fuels obsolete over the next 20 years. But for now, what we're really seeing is the AI play and the crypto, the crypto plays. So... Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention about this week is we have this unusual, rare, uh, double Kazemi of Mercury and Saturn, um, on Wednesday, the 28th. And one thing I noticed, and I'm putting this out in a tweet right now, is that this is taking place, this double Kazemi is taking place on the Ethereum natal Neptune, uh, which is a point of optimism and faith. I just put that out on my feed. So I think that this could be very bullish week for uh, Ethereum um, as well. Um, and this is such a... This is such uh, an interesting, rare combination this week. I think it's a little hard to read it because normally Mercury in Pisces in detriment conjunct heavy, serious Saturn. You know, that would be a shit show. That would be a car crash. Uh, but the fact that they're both going Kazemi on the sun, exactly conjunct the sun, um, that is, I think, could be very favorable. In fact, could be bullish. And so far... Uh, so far, the week is starting off quite bullish for, for crypto. Um, geez, I'm just checking Bitcoin right now, and it's already above 
of 54. And Ethereum also is breaking out as well. And like I said, technically, you know, we broke the key resistance for Bitcoin was really 52. Um, and that weekly is breaking out. There's not a lot of technical resistance now um, for Bitcoin um, until that old all time high. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are maybe some technical factors, but. Uh, basically, I mean, if you look at the chart on the weekly chart, there's no real significant weekly support resistance level now until you get until you get to that the old weekly all time high from November 2021 and the weekly on uh, that 65,000. So, um, you know, we could we could be heading to that new we could test. We could be heading to test the previous all-time high for Bitcoin. It's a bull market, guys. It's a rare, unique wealth creation opportunity over the next 6, 12, perhaps even 18-month period here. I certainly wouldn't be selling a lot of crypto before the halving because we know historically most of the bullish action comes after the halving. Um, I did take a little bit of profits myself that I had six months of gains, and I took about 5% off the table last week uh, when Bitcoin broke above $50,000 just to have a little bit of cash on the side and lock in some of those gains. I think locking in gains along the way is going to be key because a lot of people have ride these crypto cycles up and then they ride them all the way back down. And uh, we call this just skimming the cream off the top, taking that you know, five to seven percent off occasionally every few months just to lock in those gains, pay yourself and make sure uh, that you've got something to show for it at the end of this bull market. All right, guys, that's that's my presentation. Um, you know, if SJ or Marcelia, you got anything you wanted to comment on that, um, you know, uh, go for it. Oh, nice job to both of you. I think we're more or less in agreement you know where the wiggles come in is is a little tough to say we we agree uh air signs usually choose crypto so is that going to be venus leaving aquarius yeah we probably how, how much you know and, and and exactly what happens at the fed next fed meeting are, are tough calls to make but i think we're totally in line with the big picture um especially through the first half of this year yeah, I mean, one thing I want to just add is that I do think April, in all of 2024, April is possibly one of, one of the worst months astrologically. Uh, it's got Mercury retrograde. Uh, it's got uh, the eclipse, uh, that total solar eclipse, exactly conjunct Chiron. And then it's also got the conjunction of the malefics, Mars and Saturn, like two days later. So there's, that's a signature to me of some type of global crisis, uh, not at the level of the pandemic or 2020, uh, but certainly um, we could see some really disruptive, chaotic world events in that period. Uh, now, that's not necessarily a market call. I don't know how markets will, will react to it, but uh, just in terms of poli world politics, global events, I would be expecting uh, that April could be a challenging, difficult, could see some real difficulties there. So you're weighting those three over the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Well, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction comes at the end, um, and it's certainly a big favorable, I mean, no, no doubt, for big tech and crypto. And, you know, as we know, I mean, crypto can do well in a crisis. Uh, so a crisis certainly doesn't mean a pullback for crypto uh, per se. Uh, the banking crisis last year... Uh, various other crises we've seen Bitcoin do very well. Um, so again, yeah, it's not a market call, but it's just saying that Gaza, Ukraine, I mean, there's a lot of things could go wrong. Uh, you know, eclipses with Chiron and Mars-Saturn conjunction together. The eclipse lord is, is Mars. I, I just don't like it. it, it it's And Mercury retrograde. I mean, I, it's hard to come up with a positive scenario for that combination. Uh, and certainly uh, stocks can and have taken a hit on the Mars-Saturn conjunctions historically. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, bigger picture, the Jupiter-Uranus is certainly more, much more sig significant. And, you know, uh, you know, it's interesting because we just saw a lunar landing for the first time in 50 years. 
Um, and interestingly, you know, the 1969 Jupiter Uranus was was very famous for the the first man on the moon. So we're seeing some repeat history rhyming uh, astrologically there. Do you? I mean, you don't think uh, you guys don't aren't a little bit concerned about the Chiron uh, total solar eclipse with the Mars Saturn conjunction? Certainly, a little yeah. bit of caution is. <laughs> call I'm, more on that. I'm concerned. I'm concerned, and part of why is that I think in DC, when you pull up that chart, uh, the eighth house of you know shared assets or whatever has the so, uh, the, the conjunction. So it's an eight house, eight toll sign house in DC. If you're going to delineate that eclipse chart uh, based on location for Washington DC, let me just get that up and confirm it. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. Let me apply here. Okay. So, you know, anyhow, Thomas, yeah, it's concerning, but I mean, this could be bullish when you think about um, where is the safe haven, you know, are you going to have a, a algorithmic computer? Or is it going to be code? It's just math. You know, I think that's a good safe haven. And I think we're seeing countries and corporations agreeing. I just saw Reddit uh, when their public filings were released for their, for their initial public offering has Bitcoin and Ethereum on their balance sheet. Uh, there was just tweets about Sailor, half a billion dollars just on this last little bounce, you know. And so I think we may be seeing a perfect storm for this is kind of the year that crypto and, you know, kind of asserts itself uh, geopolitically. And uh, one, one real quick thing I say aside from all that, you know, that March moment is very interesting. The, the new moon top, it's a new moon in Pisces. And I just want to reiterate how bearish Pisces has been across the planets and signs data it's just something that bitcoin doesn't bitcoin like specifically right for You're bitcoin, talking about bitcoin specifically for bitcoin specifically the planets and signs data most have challenges in pisces and we don't have to you know we can look just as recently back when jupiter was there uh, in 20 at the end of 2021 and how that did trigger you know massive sell off so I'm just saying locally, if we're trying to find yeah. an area when there may be, I'm just kind of underscoring what you said and what Marsilio yeah. said. It just, I mean, that might, that's one that piques my interest for one of these like shallow pre having dips. And where, what zone could that be? Like, I think weekly 20 moving average is about as low as you'll get. And that's way lower now than, for example, the conversion line on the weekly Ichimoku cloud or the baseline. And, you know, anyhow, it's just, just throwing this stuff out there. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen either, how loads, how, when these dips will arrive or how shallow, but I think there's probably billions of dollars ready to, with a buy button, billions, maybe even I mean, huge amounts of money um, ready to buy these dips. And that's who you're competing against, you know, the whole world effectively waiting for dips. And what if we don't see one? You know, I mean, I think you're right to think, what if we, I mean, where's the price right now? Are we going to see all-time highs today? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I, I just, just kidding. put out that tweet. I mean, it's technically clear skies now if this breakout continues. Real quick, uh, I want to, one account I want to shout out, and this is on a paid or anything. It's just, just account, an account I really like that's been doing a lot of good um, analog work. Uh, a S L I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eight. I don't know if anybody has seen in this account. <laughs> But it's some really great fractal analog work with the eclipses. The reason why I bring this account up is that there's been work here around the bullishness of eclipses now. We've, we've shifted into bullish eclipse cycles. Um, and uh, when you look at the data they've been posting, so there's a tweet on February 19 from this person that um, shows a bullish uh, eclipse analog, for example, for Ethereum, that there's rallies in between eclipses. And we saw that with the last eclipse season in September, October, which included the first eclipse in Libra, um, a rallies in between eclipses. And so that is very interesting to me as well, that I, what if we're seeing some rallies again in between these eclipses? It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, so, okay, that's, that's what well, I have. I'm trying to yeah. answer this. Any final yeah. thoughts here for me? I don't really have any final thoughts. Just take care out there. You know, get spiritual, pray, love yourself, all the positive self-talk stuff. I mean, I, I know that's not necessarily the topic here, but I think it relates, you know, money and stocks and crypto and just life and eclipses in, in general can be wildly discombobulating. Yeah. So I think staying grounded is going to help you across whatever you're doing in life. And I recommend... 
things like I do Vipassana meditation, loving kindness meditation, yoga, all of these things are really, I think, central during a time like this, especially when you talk about crazy news. And I mean, get ready, man, because this could be insane uh, on, on every level. Presidential race, uh, the war in Russia, that seems to be the tenor on that news in the last day or two even seems to be ramping up. Um, so... You know, uh, this is just a kind of wider message to like take care of your heart, soul, mind during this time. And um, I think that'll help you ride whatever these rallies are going to be for you. Let me see if there's one final thing. And, oh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm not actively tweeting day to day about this stuff. I'm mainly tweeting about other stuff. So just know that if you follow my account, occasionally I do throw in some of these observations. And then whenever we do a space, if I get invited by Domus, I will throw out kind of my latest observations like I did today. So, okay, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, I'm on. I mean, I agree. I'm not doing a lot of trading, you know, myself. I don't think there's really a lot of point in doing a lot of trading right now because I think uh, just holding and riding this wave up is really the key thing. You know, I, I did sell a little bit last week. I hadn't sold anything since last summer, and I've just really been adding mainly September, October, November, um, and, you know, so every few months I do a little bit of buy and sell, uh, when the market gives the opportunity, but, uh, be careful of over trading right now. And these bears who continue to post charts for sub 40, you know, I really doubt we're going to be seeing that you're, you know, you're talking about a, you know, $15,000 correction now, just not seeing that, just not seeing that, that happening. Um, Marcelia, did you have any last thoughts to add before we take uh, questions here? No, uh, go, go ahead. We'll uh, wait for questions. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to uh, do this questions here, and I'm not, let me see if I can see how to do this. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I have a request for a question here. <laughs> Just going to check this, um, and, oh, okay, so, uh, I just I just approved the speaker, uh, this person, the speaker, All so right. I can do it too, Damas, but I just okay. approved him. There he is. Come on in. Um, I see it's a Azuki profile pic and dot bitmap, I think, with a... Uh, yeah, there yes, you go. Yes. Come on in. Yes, I'm hearing you. Thanks. Thanks, Anderson. Uh, hi, Marsilio. Hi, Crypto Damas, and thanks for all you're doing for the space. Um, uh, I kind of agree about uh, March not being uh, glorious. What I would like to bring is two precisions concerning April and, and May. So in April, we have this jupiter Uranus conjunction. And I noticed that um, the first, the second world war started with, uh, with this, started after a jupiter Uranus conjunction. And the first world war started after a trine between Uranus and Jupiter. So, and we had, we, we had it even in 2013, but uh, there was no volume on the BTC for, for, for it to make it a difference or something you can read. But I think that after that, most probably, like you said, uh, Putin will be, will be, will be put on. I mean, the tensions, I, I don't know what they will invent on the Polish border or something. Because also they have to cover up for what they're doing in Europe because the, the, the main engine of Europe is gone. I mean, Germany committed suicide. The, the industry in, in Germany is gone. So the European Union is preparing to collapse. But before this, yesterday, the French Ministry of Economics uh, announced that they would have the power to, to put their hands on, uh, on their bank accounts for financing their project. We will see what will happen end of April. April. Uh, now I want to go back, to go to May, when you say uh, that, okay, 25th, 26th of May, Jupiter is getting out of, um, of Taurus towards Gemini. This is very important. Yes, I agree. But on the 1st of June, immediately, it is trying Pluto. And this is not good for the markets at all. So I think we'll have a bad June. And before it, on between the 10th and the 20th of May, after the halving, you have two conditions which are node in fire, we agree our node is in Aries, and we have Jupiter trine Neptune. These two conditions were present in June 2011. And what happened in June 2011 was absolutely crazy. So I think the combination of uh, node in fire 
with Jupiter trying Neptune uh, can be explosive and could be could bring the explosion of the of the, the month of May. But immediately after Pluto is intervening, uh, trining the Sun, then trining Jupiter, so we should go down. And now, if we consider that the main factor becomes Jupiter, we have also to observe that in July it will be trying the node, and this could bring another uh, another boost, uh, another bullish boost. Now, uh, as for you, uh, um, for what you said about August, Pluto Damus. Uh, the, the square between Jupiter and Saturn, I think it will be very bad, but let's not, not forget it will also repeat in December. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that was a lot. I'm, uh, I personally um, think that Jupiter-Pluto uh, trine would be very good. I think it would be very favorable, again, for AI, big tech, and crypto. Uh, so uh, Jupiter and Gemini trining Pluto and Aquarius, I think, Personally, I think that's a favorable. Um, the Jupiter-Saturn squares, uh, I mean, historically, if you look at them, they're not really that bad for the markets. Uh, I've looked at the last two or three uh, Jupiter-Saturn squares, and the, usually you will get a sideways consolidation. You'll get some pullbacks, uh, but you don't usually get like a kind of a big, a bigger crash. Okay, okay. Is this still going? Can you hear me? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Okay, we, you were broken up there, Domus. Um, oh. oh, sorry. Just the last uh, 30 seconds or so. I couldn't hear you. I don't know if, if others, others missed you as well. Oh, but, um, yeah, I think I just said the Jupiter-Saturn squares, They historically, they don't, they don't tend to be that bad. Uh, they do. You will get sideways consolidations. I mean, you'll get pullbacks. Uh, Bitcoin actually did quite well in the previous Jupiter-Saturn square. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we just have to see where we are with inflation and interest rates and world events. Uh, it's a little hard to predict it uh, this far in advance. But certainly right now, the Jupiter-Saturn sextile uh, continues to be very bullish for the markets. Yes. Uh, do we want to take the next uh, question? or uh, I just want to, I want to add a quick comment. You know, I have a sure. whole video on my YouTube channel. You can follow my same handle. Uh, just type it into the YouTube search bar, SJ Anderson 144. It's called The uh, Rebirth of America. And in that video, I go, it was a talk I gave at a um, astrology conference last year. But I go into all of the dates around the Uranus cycle and World War One. sorry, World War Two, the Civil War and the Revolutionary War with like specific dates. And it, I really break down a lot there. And, you know, my sense is that uh, 2025 is the hottest, hottest time, fall 2025 in particular, for some real wild turns, um, I, rather than 2024. I mean, I, and again, I, um, and in that I cover a lot of, like, spiritual preparation for that, just to make sure to say that here. Yeah. Like, I, I hope that we have um, one, just, I brought it up, so let me just say the one most important thing, which is that we're in a different uh, Jupiter-Saturn elemental age, the air age, rather than the earth age. And I hope that um, that m might mean there's some people on Twitter that have suggested that we're going to not be more kinetic. It'll be less kinetic and more digital or mind oriented because it's an air element. So um, I don't think it has to repeat exactly. But just to know on the timing of that, my sense is, is a little bit late next year is a, is a hotter zone for it. Now, I wasn't looking at Jupiter-Uranus conjunction orbs or anything like that around the timing, more about the degree of Uranus as it crosses the border from Taurus into Gemini and then back. And so, for example, Pearl Harbor happens after Uranus had entered Gemini the first time and then came back into Taurus. Then you had Pearl Harbor. Uh, now, we know war was in Europe in 41 before that, you know, so it's kind of similar to now maybe, but... Anyhow, pray for peace. It doesn't have to be war. Let's not talk. You know, I just raise it because the question, the person raised this point, and you know, for twenty twenty four spring, I don't know. I'm just less. I'm less interested. Uh, on the one hand, now we always wrong. Astrologers don't get things right perfectly, but just people can go watch that video to see what. Uh, it's all about that exact yeah. point. So okay. Yeah, I agree. I I just want to throw out throw in that I agree with you. I'm I'm more concerned, you know, as you are for twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six with uh, all those planets, the outer planets changing signs and 
the Saturn uh, Neptune conjunction at, at zero Aries. I mean, these are really serious. I, I think the Dragon Year is going to be good. I'm optimistic for 2024. I think April is a tough month, but I, I don't think we're going to have a major world war or a crisis market crash. You know, I don't. I, I'm, I'm not seeing that. That's not you know the main thing I'm focused on. I think this is. This is a bull market. I think it's generally going to be a good year. Of course, there's going to be crises. Of course, there's going to be corrections. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm much worried about the 2025, 26. Well, we got to wrap this up here. Let's let's take another question. Uh, is there anybody else out there uh, who has a question? So you say old T S Eliot April is the cruelest month. Is that what is that is that what we're kind of agree in agreement on here? Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean the kind you know, pretty rare to see a solar eclipse, you know, exact total solar eclipse and exactly conjunct Chiron to the minute. That is it's pretty rare. It's definitely you know, Chiron Chiron has a, is a myth that has a lot of suffering, you know. Chiron suffered greatly and so and eclipses themselves can be quite dark and edgy um certainly they can be transformative in a positive way chiron also has positive qualities of healing holistic healing making holistic healing available and um healing of deep trauma but you know i think it's a tough i think it's a tough configuration uh, it's not personally great in my in my own chart uh so there's that, and um, I'm going to uh, make this gentleman, Sam Colombo, here. You can uh, ask your question. Hey, guys. Do you hear me all right? Yep. Gotcha. All right. Uh, first off, I've been following both of you guys for some while, and uh, love your content. You guys put out amazing astrology uh, content, especially as it relates to the markets. Uh, question, how you see, I know this might have been touched upon, but the Chiron North Node conjunction in Aries happening so close to the midheaven of Bitcoin, um, as well as, you know, Pluto ingressing into Aquarius, touching Bitcoin's uh, Mercury, uh, two degrees. You know, don't, isn't this likely to see like a firestorm of sorts of just like attention on Bitcoin in a public way? I mean, wouldn't that be one possible interpretation? Um, the, the public, Aquarius, Mercury, and Aquarius, Pluto, and Aquarius, bringing you know, awareness around independence and, you know, Aries themes of, uh, you know, self, you know, self-reliance and whatnot and using Bitcoin as the medium for that. Like, could that be the story? And then that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is happening uh, also in Bitcoin's uh, 10th house, you know, is further, like, you know, ideas around money and resourcefulness and who can we trust and pragmatism and so forth. I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that, like the explosion of uh, interest that could whatever the catalysts are in the collective it could bring a tremendous amount of attention to crypto and bitcoin yeah i mean i think we're already seeing that i mean the bitcoin spot etfs you know were approved 10 days before pluto entered aquarius so there's a certainly a very strong correlation mm. and i've been saying that all along that pluto and aquarius would be very very good for uh, bitcoin and crypto um, and and uh, and AI uh, as well, and those are all those are all playing out. So, um, as far as the natal chart stuff, uh, yeah, I mean the Chiron uh, node conjunction was last week. It was exact a week ago. It's already starting to separate. Um, I don't know. I don't use Chiron that much in the financial astrology. I mean Chiron. It's already crisscrossed over the Bitcoin midheaven a few times. I don't see it as really that important one way or the other. Um, the Pluto is going to touch the Bitcoin natal Mercury, which is that two Aquarius. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's going to do. Uh, Pluto was on the Bitcoin natal Jupiter like four times. Um, and that, you know, was actually quite positive. So Bitcoin was pretty bullish with that alignment last year and this year. Um so yeah, that uh, conjunction is interesting. It won't go exact this year. It will not go exact until next year, where it hits technically exact. I think uh, just to be a little astrologically technical here, the Bitcoin natal Mercury is at like what two forty five Aquarius, something like that. Two forty seven. Yeah. What's that? 
247 is what I'm looking 247 at. and the Bitcoin and Pluto only goes to 205 this year. So that makes a difference that it won't hit exact. Um, but I mean, Pluto obviously can bring breakdown and destruction and then you get that renewal and regeneration. So there's, there's always that possibility. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't have a strong uh, opinion on it predictively. But uh, breaking, yeah, breaking down something having to do with the logistics or the network or something like that. But overall, I mean, I'm seeing the Pluto and Aquarius um, as, as a favorable, uh, you know. And, and again, I, I think the Jupiter in Gemini trying Pluto and Aquarius also is air in air trying. That's traditionally a wealth aspect. Jupiter trying Pluto is increasing wealth um, and power. Um, and I think it's just going to really highlight the Pluto and Aquarius technological breakthroughs. Jupiter conjuncting Uranus, Uranus, the modern ruler of Aquarius, also I think is going to highlight technological and scientific breakthroughs of Pluto and Aquarius. So, you know, Pluto and Aquarius is really the main story this year, and it just gets activated over and over again. Even the March 25th eclipse at 5 Libra is trying Pluto. That one maybe will be a little more problematic. The darker side of, of tech, AI and robotics and drone warfare, nukes in space and all of this stuff. Uh, but yeah, Pluto and Aquarius is the big theme of 2024. Um, and it's it's a new era we're living in. And we're, you know, the, the Apple's Vision Pro coming out. That's another Pluto and Aquarius, even though Apple itself isn't doing that great, the stock. But um, yeah, technological. This is the year of technological breakthroughs to me, not a, of a global crisis. Can I just can I add something yeah. here, Adamus? Um, I want to come back to the Chiron North Node and the Midheaven. I mean, what is the North Node? The appetites, the kind of hungry ghost sort of thing. Um, when Chiron is the wound, I think this could relate to longer term issues around the ETF custodian ship being. Um, overweight institutions you know because if you have a, like one account at coinbase for example holding the etf many of the etfs bitcoin i know some of them are self custodying as well I, for, I forget which ones i think fidelity is and maybe a, another another one or two of them but could this create some long-term woundedness around bitcoin i mean it was right on the midheaven as you point out where this could be a future issue to what to look out for if there's ever an attack on it um this would be the way to do it um, if you can't attack the miners. So anyhow, that's some, that's a whole other well, conversation. This, is the third, uh, this will be the third uh, one. Uh, we should look back at those two previous conjunctions and see uh, what took place because I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, and even a lot of this could be behind the scenes or shuffling to yes. get, get control of this ETF approval to then as a kind of way to get it in, in terms of an institutional container as somehow. The other thing I just want to say about the Pluto cycle is that when you look at the exact degree hit in 2025 of Pluto on Mercury, um, that will be a triple pass through that year. So it will yeah. ret retrograde back and then it will hit to Mercury and then it finally hits it the third and final time after the October 2025 date that a lot of us, all of us have been interested in as a potential cycle top, just based on some of the mathematics and some of the other cycles. And so it looks like that Pluto uh, on Mercury could potentially be bullish, but but then when you project to, into 2028, you get Pluto on maybe the most interesting um, uh, degree um, um, dyad of all of Bitcoin, which is the eight degree descendant and the nine degree nodal axis and the London uh, Genesis block nativity chart. And that would be with the next cycle, timing some highs with Pluto, Pluto hitting in 2028 and 2029 which would be an analog of 2020, 2024, 2025, if we roll with four-year math, you know, Bitcoin is math idea, right? We're back to Pluto activating that, that algorithm of the, um, you know, the ledger, the programmatic, programmatic ledger. So anyhow, just some final thoughts on that. A few thoughts on that. we got another requested person. Domus, can I, can I approve this person? Yeah, um, this will be the last one because okay. I got I to gotta go. Okay. Um, so uh, Nawab, I'm just pressing approve now. Come on in. Let me see if this works. Right, okay, I pressed it a bunch of times. Did you get, are you in there? No? Uh, let me try it a few more times if this isn't going to, I'm pressing it and it's not letting us in. There we go. You're in, Nawab. Come on in. Just unmute. Just be unmute and, you'll, and then you can start speaking. 
the wild. Hi, come on in. All right, if you're not there, Sarah, you've requested. I'm going to let you in and uh, see if maybe you'll be able to speak. Let me see here. This phone. Come on, Elon. Get your stuff together with your programmers, please. <laughs> um, so, Sarah, I'm not. Let me see. I'm going to try to. Uh, there we go. Sarah, go ahead and unmute if you can. Are you able to and ask a question? So it looks like, um, try it again, Sarah, or Nawab, either of you can, there you go, Hi. Sarah, you're unmuted, come on in. Yeah. Hello, SG. Hello. I just want to say, uh, okay, goodbye. Did, did anybody hear what she said? Sorry, I couldn't make it out. Did she just say hello, or, or what did, did she do? Yeah, I'm not sure. I actually didn't either, but I'm actually, I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, you've got a heavy accent for us. It's a little hard to understand. What, I'm sorry, what you're saying. Guys, I mean, because I'm Okay, I don't understand. So, can you type it uh, maybe for us, uh, and we can read it there if you, if it might be a little easier. Uh, just type it. You can reply to the. Uh, crypto diamonds. I guess in space. Guys, um, I've, I, I've actually got to take off because I got to get ready for my next client here, um, and I'm just going to give a shout out to myself. Um, check out my Twitter, Astro Crypto Guru, and I've got. If you like what we've been hearing, I do uh, reports monthly and weekly updates on my Patreon, and you can check all that stuff out on my website, www.astrocryptoreport. Dot com. I wish everybody happiness, prosperity, good health in the 2024 Dragon Year. I'm going to sign off. You guys can keep it going with some more questions. And I will check you guys next time. All right. I'll hang out for another few minutes here if anybody wants to hang out here. Um, Thomas, thank you. Peace out to you, sir. Good, sir. And uh, have a great uh, day there, um, uh, wherever you may be. Marcelio, you want to say anything here? Go ahead. Uh, sure, Damas, thanks again for having us, and we'll continue just for a couple more minutes in case anyone has another question, and uh, all the best. Okay, um, anybody else come in here with a question? Uh, at, uh, anybody else? Nawab, if you're able to unmute, go ahead, and if not, we can kind of wind it down. I don't really have anything else to say. Um, questions out there? Anybody? Going once, going twice, going three, four, five, six, <laughs> Marcelio, go ahead. I think we're good then. Um, all right. Well, um, um, I guess that's it. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. The recording will be available. And um, see you next time. Okay. Peace out, everyone. Bye-bye.